Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the classes in Killing Floor 2 and we're going to be ranking them in our tier list. We've done this several times but I haven't done it yet this year and there has been some changes to the classes. Now this time I'm going to be taking a bit of a different look at this than rather just six man hell on earth what's the best team comp. So first up we're going to be talking about each of the classes and we're going to be talking about the skill floor and the skill ceiling. Skill floor is just how easy is it for you to pick up the class and play it proficiently? This doesn't mean necessarily playing it at like the highest level. This is just how well do the mechanics work for newer players and how easy is it for newer players to pick them up. Skill ceiling is kind of the opposite of that, which is how much stuff can you do with the class? Certain classes might have a high skill floor, but the skill ceiling is very low compared to that where it's like once you figure out the basics, you have pretty much mastered them. This will be centered around multiplayer, but once I get through with that, I will talk about each of these in solo. So with that explanation out of the way, let's talk about these. First up is Berserker, and Berserker is the melee class, and Berserker in terms of skill floor is not too high up there. It doesn't take too much to be a decent Berserker. Learning how to block and parry, mostly blocking early on isn't too hard. Learning to parry is very difficult or at least it can be difficult. If you go ranged berserker, it's not so bad because you are pretty tanky, you can soak up some damage and you can still shoot normally. So you're just a more tanky version of some of the other classes. But the skill ceiling is very high for them. You can do a lot of stuff with berserker, you can play around with a lot of their weapons. Once you get the parry mechanic down, then you can be really, really efficient at melee fighting. You can 1v1 basically anything. You can take out crowds all by yourself. You can wander around the map by yourself. You don't really need to hang out with the team, although you probably shouldn't be wandering off too much. And sometimes the best thing that you can do is just turtle up and hide somewhere. Um, like prison is a great example of that. Uh, it sounds kind of funny when I say it that way. But the prison map, you can literally just sit right in front of the watchtower and just make it so nothing can come near your team as your team just picks off everything and you just have a shield sitting right in front of you. So Berserker, I would put up into the A tier. I think they're still pretty good if you build them as a tank class. They haven't really been changed in the longest time. Their loadouts are still basically the same as to what's the best for them. They're not one of the top classes anymore, at least for multiplayer, but they are really good on certain maps and it's never a bad thing to have at least one Berserker on your team in almost every map besides maybe like long range custom maps that you're playing or certain maps that are very long range that are now implemented into the game. Then we have Commando. Commando is a fairly low skill floor class. It's probably going to be the class that you can gravitate the easiest to if you've played other shooter games because Commando is just the assault rifle class. You throw in an assault rifle or two, you shoot all the things in the head or you shoot them in the body enough and they die. Although Commando does have a decently high skill ceiling Mostly with just these Z extensions. If you can keep triggering the Z extensions, then you can keep them going, and that can really be useful for the team. Main problem with Commando is that you don't really want more than one Commando. You, one Commando is more than enough for a team. If you have multiple Commandos, it it's not really the best. Commando is fairly squishy by themselves. If Commando is one of the last people standing, that's not way great. They don't have extra mobility or anything. So Commando I'm also going to throw up into the A tier because they're fairly easy to learn. The Z extensions aren't too bad, and if you want to just go with a straight build that just keeps spraying at stuff, it's not too hard to do that, and you'll still generally do quite well with Commando. But if you want to do the absolute best, it does take a little bit more skill. Other times, Commando just sort of wastes time by doing that, and I've always had a tumultuous relationship with Commando as a class. More of the opinion surrounding Commando, because I honestly don't think Commando is one of the strongest perks in the game. They're a good support perk but that's kind of like their main role and they can do it pretty well, but they don't really do other roles way great. Moving on from there, we have Sharpshooter because this list is in a weird setting, but whatever. Sharpshooter is probably one of the highest skill floor classes in the game because it solely relies on how good you are at shooting. You want to be hitting headshots, you get rewarded for hitting headshots. You don't necessarily get punished for hitting body shots, at least against the small and medium enemies. You'll still kill them very fast. And Sharpshooter does have some weapons that are fairly easy to use, like the Centerfire, the M14 is very forgiving, the FAL is very forgiving, but at that point you're kind of just playing a commando role, and it's still not doing a whole lot for the big Zeds. It can once you hit rack em up, and then it's pretty decent up until boss wave. If you're playing a sniper role, it's very difficult, and then the skill ceiling is extremely high, so they can be very uh, unforgiving, as well as Sharpshooter is very squishy. So Sharpshooter, I think I'd put like C tier just because they are probably one of the most difficult classes to play. And even once you are really good at playing Sharpshooter, you can still be punished just for the class's lack of uh, survivability. You don't really have much mobility and you don't really have much survivability. 
if a lot of crawlers or stalkers or something just climbs right on top of you, there's not very much that you can do as opposed to some other classes. So even once you are really good with this class, you can still be punished with it pretty hard. Support going the opposite way of uh, Sharpshooter is probably one of the easiest classes to pick up and play for new players. The shotguns are very forgiving. You can be more tanky than other classes if you wish to be. You do good damage towards everything besides like boss wave where you don't necessarily kill bosses super fast. But big, medium, and small zeds you can all kill really quick. You can hold a lot of uh, shots. Their passive is super useful for people just picking up ammo off of you. Support has probably been one of the best classes to play, although their skill ceiling is not that much higher than their skill floor, in all honesty. They're very easy to pick up, and there's not a whole lot to necessarily master with them. Like, you can learn how to uh, jump over things with the double barrel or the doomstick. You can kind of learn to block and parry with something like the Frost Fang if you really want to. But for the most part, you can kind of just play whatever build you want. You're going to be super useful for any sort of team. And there's never going to be a time where, like, you're upset that there is two, three, four supports on your team. No matter what class you're playing. Because that's just free ammo. That's just free armor. So support is, like, high up in A tier. They have been very solid all throughout the game. I don't know if they've ever really been S tier, but they've never been, like, lower than A or B tier anyway throughout this, like, whole game's series. They've basically just gotten buffs. And they've been minor buffs because, honestly, support never really needed a whole lot. Survivalist is probably one of the classes with the highest skill floor and the highest skill ceiling. Although, it's not super high in a lot of cases because you can mitigate it depending on the weapons that you choose. Survivalist is the jack-of-all-trades class where you can play everything and you're pretty good at everything, especially with all the buffs that they gave Survivalist. You can block and parry, you can run faster, you have a higher amount of survivability than other classes, you do high damage, you can specialize in roles where your team might be lacking, so if you want to go with explosives, you can do that, or if you want to go with crowd control or healing. There's always a mix of things that you can do with Survivalist, and that's kind of where the skill floor and the skill ceiling come in. The skill floor for actually just playing Survivalist well isn't necessarily that high, because you could just pick a solid loadout that works well with the majority of teams and the majority of loadouts and everything like that, and you'll probably do just fine because you're just going to be a more tanky class than others, and you can still do high damage, you can still heal better than other classes. So that's pretty nice. It's mostly the skill ceiling where you have probably the highest point, because you can constantly pivot your build to whatever your team needs, and that's why Survivalist can be potentially the most punishing class to play as well, because if you're just stuck with one particular build, say you're going all damage and your team needs a medic, and you're not switching over to something like that, it can really hurt the team. Vice versa could happen though too if you're trying to keep the whole team alive, but the team just can't kill anything quickly, then it would probably be better that you just switch to damage so that you can kill things fast and have somebody else on the team being more of the medic role. Or somewhere in between where you can kind of mix and match all of this. So Survivalist, I'm also going to put up into A tier. They are very solid overall once you get the hang of them but it does take a lot of effort to get the hang of them. If you're just starting out, though, they're, funny enough, probably one of the best classes to start out with because they don't really scale with anything. They kind of scale with everything all at once, and that's just really easy and makes it so builds can be very flexible. You can really try out what whatever you like, or it's very easy to transition from another class to survivalist because they likely have some aspect of them with maybe the exception of like Firebug. Then we have SWAT. SWAT is probably one of the easiest classes to play, similar to support. They have one of the lowest skill floors and probably one of the lowest skill ceilings. Well, you can actually do a decent amount of things, so their skill ceiling is probably like mid-range. SWAT is probably the strongest starting class in the entire game. It's the best thing to do if you want to have the most value in a game to just start off as SWAT. The starting submachine gun is fantastic for clearing up the first couple waves. You can start out with double pistols, so you have an advantage there just by killing more things that way. You also get bonus damage with your pistols and with your knife, so clearing up the first wave is going to be super easy. You can also start out with a bunch of extra armor that you can carry over to another class if you want to switch over to it. SWAT is amazing in that role. It's just as the rounds go on, SWAT tends to kind of fall off because outside of that, your role is mostly to kill medium and small zeds, although with all the new weapons that SWAT has got, they can kill all the big Zeds fairly quick and fairly efficiently too. They also have the easiest to use uh, grenade, besides maybe the medic grenade, with the flashbang where you can't hurt yourself with it, you can stun a bunch of enemies, or you can kill a bunch of small enemies. So SWAT is a very solid class. I'd probably put them like B tier. Again, the skill ceiling is not really that high, and they do tend to sort of fall off a little bit as the rounds go on, 
but still super solid class and uh, again probably like they're definitely s tier at the very start of the match but then as the match goes on, they kind of go down a little bit. Demo's a fantastic class too. The skill floor for Demo is actually kind of high. It is so long as you're using weapons that you can hurt yourself with. If you're using weapons that you can't hurt yourself with, then it's not so bad. Then it's pretty easy to play Demo. Just shoot anything that comes near you and you don't need to be super accurate. If you're using the ones where you can be injured from the explosion, you have to know the ranges so that you can fire safely. You're still fairly squishy as a class. You can kill a lot of things, you can do a lot of damage, and the skill ceiling is also fairly high for demo with all the things that you can do. And again, it's mostly just knowing positioning with demo. Once you get that down, then demo demo is pretty awesome. And I'd probably put them like B tier, basically just because they're a little bit squishy as to why they would go here. Super solid, super fun class to use, and really good in a team setting. Uh, especially if you're keeping yourself safe and putting yourself towards the back or the middle of the group so that you're not taking the brunt of the damage. You don't want to be uh, on the front lines as demo. You want to be hanging back and providing a lot of uh, destruction from a distance, softening up everything so that your team can kind of clean up whatever comes in after that. Then we've got Firebug. Firebug is kind of similar to demo, although Firebug has a pretty low skill floor. It's not too hard to pick up Firebug because you don't need to be super accurate. Most of their weapons are pretty forgiving. The fire will clear up all the small enemies really well. The skill ceiling is a little bit higher for Firebug because you kind of want to prioritize just crowds of enemies. You don't want to be trying to take out big enemies unless you've got like a Helios rifle, in which case then that's perfectly fine. It can also be a little bit of a detriment to you at early on because you might light yourself on fire with your own Molotovs. That can be a little bit rough. But as long as you're not doing that, as long as you're taking your time and throwing those further out, it's not so bad. Firebug is still really squishy, though. You don't have any extra survivability compared to other classes besides some knockback on your weapons, which can help. And once you get really good with Firebug, it is very easy to just go from Firebug starting out just one of the strongest classes to start out with in the game and getting all the way to boss wave very consistently. So it does have a lot going for it in that way, but you do kind of have to get pretty good with that. So I'm going to put them up into B tier, similar to like demo, a little bit easier to master than demo, I would say, and a little bit easier to just start out with than demo. Maybe not as easy as like SWAT, but still pretty easy. Gunslinger's probably also one of the highest skill floor classes in the game, although the skill ceiling is not that much higher. Basically, this is just positioning and movement, similar to Sharpshooter, but you can move around much faster than Sharpshooter, so you can keep yourself alive. And Gunslinger's been absolutely ridiculous for the longest time, and I'd probably just put them right up into S tier, because once you get really, really good with Gunslinger, you can basically use any combination of their weapons, and you'll just carry the entire team that way. You're also just one of the best carries if everybody dies, because you can just constantly run around the map, and so long as you can keep finding ammo and don't trap yourself in a corner or you can clear up the entire map super easy. You're very strong in the early game, you're very strong in the mid game, and you're absolutely ridiculously strong towards the end game and towards boss wave. Again, not the easiest starting class though, they're probably one of the more difficult ones because early on you don't have that amount of mobility, you're probably not used to the maps and how you want to move, and you also need to be rather accurate by hitting headshots so that you can get the most value from Gunslinger. But once you get those fundamentals down, Gunslinger just completely destroys like every other class in this game. It's ridiculous. And then Medic, which got recently nerfed in the last patch, it got nerfed pretty heavily. Medic is still probably one of the best classes though in multiplayer. And the skill floor is extremely low for Medic. It doesn't really take that much to be good at Medic. Just heal teammates and clear off some small things. Just learn when to throw your Medic grenades and that's about it. Once you have those down, Medic is super solid, but the uh, skill ceiling for Medic is very high because you can combine so many different weapons together and so many different playstyles, and this might turn into more knowing the maps that you're playing on than anything else to where what type of build do you want to go with and which one is the strongest. So Medic I would also put up into S tier. You definitely want at least one Medic and potentially more off Medics. You don't necessarily need like two dedicated Medic classes. It's not bad to have them, but you could have Medic being your primary medic and then commando being your uh, off medic or support being your off medic. Really any of the classes can play medic now besides firebug. Even then you could potentially go off medic with them. But they're not going to do it necessarily as well as some of the other classes like survivalist or commando or SWAT support. The classes that kind of get more medic type weapons that they can take advantage of.